Hi, I'm Jessica Bell. I'm the owner of the Midwest Wine School. I'm Fred Scherr, the proprietor and winemaker and bottle washer at Scherr Winery. So, how do you check for cork taint once the corks are in your winery? Well, um, I actually check for it before they end up in the winery. The suppliers that will actually deal with me, um, the, old, the ones that I'm aware of, when they ship the corks, they come in bales. And they used to be about 10,000, and I guess in this country it was shigat on them because they were too heavy. So now they do ship 5,000 to a bale. But they all have serial numbers on them, lot numbers, etc. So the, the, the serious cork producers and vendors can trace them back all the way to, to wherever they were processed. And if they, they end up with some problem batches, they know where to pinpoint the issues. So anyway, I get these samples, and out of these bales I'll get 100 corks, and I'll soak them in these little bottles overnight with uh, some rosé wine, some of my rosé. Rosé is, um, it seems a little more transparent wine. It has, um, uh, it, it'll show low levels of cork taint quite easily because the, the, some of the, the fruit, kind of the pretty floral stuff um, will be muted. So what I'll do is I'll soak 100 of these things overnight, Take the corks out, I'll line them all up, make sure that they're all cut about the same length. Um, I can look at the density of the cork, like the number of rings, etc. So it looks like, yeah, they, they've really done a good job of at least not blending them from uh, fast growing trees and, and slower growing trees. Then um, uh, I'll pour that wine out into glasses and smell them. And I want, I'm looking for uniformity. Uh, you're going to get a woodiness, a, a slight cork woodiness, like lactones and like that, they don't come out in there. But I want them all to kind of smell the same. If I get something that they, they, they smell different, that that is not a good, even if it doesn't smell tainted, mm -hmm. you know, that, that kind of moldy-ish right. sort of thing. I'm suspicious of that lot then. So what I'm looking for is uniformity, and uh, 100 corks out of 5,000, um, I'm not sure if the statisticians would say that's really significant, but since I've been doing that, the, the level of uh, tainted bottles I've had has dropped to like super rare. And how often do you have to do that? Uh, every time I buy corks. So oh. this last year, um, I just screened a whole bunch of bales. And uh, again, it's the, the vendors that'll deal with me. Um, you know, they, they quote me prices. I don't haggle on price. Mm -hmm. I just tell them, I'm going to look around. You, you need to make money. I need to get good product. Mm -hmm. So give me what I'm looking for, and I'll make your life easy. It's pretty simple. It sounds like a lot of work, but in the end, it, it pays off that you've got less cork taint in your wine. Yeah, the worst thing in the world is to have um, a very low level cork taint because you don't know that, or the somebody only has one shot of tasting a wine, and it's just a little bit off. You don't know, mm -hmm. and it's not recognizable as a bad cork. You might think it's well, the wine's not that good. And if it's not the wine's fault, it's the the closures. Right. So um, I think people who've had really bad experiences with corks. But from a produce, producer standpoint, have every reason to avoid them you know, and to find alternatives. And those of us who have maybe um, put resources into to working with them tend, tend to be less uh, interested in change. Mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, it's the, the closure and the winemaking techniques have kind of co evolved. Right, yeah, the closure, I mean, you can't get much better than cork, well, apart from the, the TCA. And yeah, cork it seems like a very. Um, very nice match, mm -hmm. you know, with at least the techniques. If we change closure, we probably have to change techniques. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but it is. A, it would require a change. To go to um, a more uh, fully hermetic seal, which I understand the screw cap and maybe the crown cap would do as well, um, it would change the reduction oxidation potential of what's in the bottle differently. And, and it would then pose the wines, uh, reduce um, sulfur or the volatile sulfur Pool differently. So you'll have to you'd positive. have to change almost every part of your wine making in uh, order to accommodate the new closure. Right, or some of the significant parts. Right. You know, the, the type of lees, the, the the duration of the lease contact. Um, and that trial and error period starts back at zero. It, it does. Yeah. You, know, you don't know what, which of those things you need to change. So it's it's just a whole new world then to to, to you know, ponder when changing one thing at the at the other end. When it's not a problem for you. It has not been a problem. So, um, it, but I'm interested in trying other things because if, if it's better with them, I'm, I'm all for it. Right. You, know, you have to try things to move forward.